This is definitely one of the best combos I have used for Ultra Macro so far. Hi everyone, this is Peter here. I hope you're all having an amazing day. I purchased a new camera battery just recently, the EOS R7, which was heavily discounted as part of a Black Friday deal. I was really excited to try that with one of my favorite lenses, the Laowa 25mm 2.5 to 5x ultra macro lens. I had been using this particular lens for over two years now, primarily on my ATD, which is an APS-C body from Canon. I spent hundreds of hours both in the field and in my studio, and I absolutely love this lens. Unfortunately, this is a rather difficult lens to use, especially when you are out in the field and you should be on the 3x to 4x magnification, and when there isn't much ambient light available, the viewfinder can get extremely dark, virtually pitch black at times. Luckily, this isn't the case with an electronic viewfinder, which makes the whole image taking process so much easier, and so much smoother. It's relatively easy to find your subject through the viewfinder, even when you don't have the focus picking feature enabled. Before I show you a bunch of images that I took over the course of two days, I'd like to provide you with a few quick tips that might help you if you use a similar setup. My first tip would be make sure that you enable shutter release when no lens is attached in the menu, otherwise you won't be able to take any shots. This lens doesn't have any electric contacts, so it doesn't transfer any EXIF data either. So just make a mental note about what aperture you were using if you need to know that later. Shutter speed and ISO information will still remain available, for example, in Lightroom. Another tip that I can give you is to change the focal length in the image stabilization mode submenu for optimum results. My last piece of advice would be about reducing or virtually eliminating the potential lag of the EVF by changing the display performance to smooth and also ticking the suppress lower frame rate button. By the way, for the shots that I'm about to show you, I didn't even have the focus picking enabled, but it was still so much easier to focus than on my old DSLR. Just want to talk a bit more about the gear. For lighting, I use the 600 EX2 RT. It's funny because in the manual, it clearly states that it is incompatible with the new multifunction hot shoe, but luckily it's not the case. It is actually backwards compatible with most flashes. The recommended adapter only fixes the weather ceiling. For diffusion, I had a smaller bonnet diffuser wrapped around the lens barrel, and I also had my usual reflector at the top, and in between I had an extra diffusion layer just to further soften the light. By the way, if you want to learn a little bit more about my gear in detail, I will leave links to all the relevant videos in the description. Anyway, let's have a look at those shots now that I took both in the garden and at the local nature reserve, I was also super stoked because I encountered a new spider species. I'd like to briefly touch on the exposure settings. The shutter speed I picked was between 180th and 160th of a second. The aperture was f11 to maximize depth of field for single shots. The ISO varied between the base ISO 100 and when I increased the magnification ratio all the way up to 4 to 1. I also up the ISO to 500 just to ensure proper exposure. All right, our first series is of a beautiful, rather large garden jumping spider that had captured a BBO imitator, also known as the Australian garden maggot. They have become pests in our area. I see so many of them at this time of the year, so props to this little fella for his effort in population control. I was really stoked with these images. The level of intricate detail, especially when fully zoomed in, is really impressive. The last couple of close-ups are stagged. This one contains only two frames, whereas the last one was blended together from six individual images. Our next subject is a common half-band, I believe, a hoverfly species. That enormous compound eye looks absolutely striking. Our third series is of that special little spider that I encountered for the very first time. It was climbing up and down on the leaf of a small shrub, showing off its silky smooth skills with the spider web. This mushroom comforted spider was extremely tiny, approximately 3 to 4 mm in length. I was really mesmerized by that huge protruding abdomen that featured amazing colors and patterns.
The next two images are of a plant bug. I haven't been able to narrow down the identification unfortunately because I couldn't capture it from the right angle as it kept moving non-stop on the bark of a eucalypt. The following image is of a very tiny shore fly most likely. The reason why the contrast isn't exceptional in this shot is because of the reflected light of the Swiss cheese plant. In contrast, I'm quite happy with the following close-up of a mosquito. The iridescent colors of its eye look absolutely surreal. Also, you can see some colors of the rainbow on the silhouette of its body because of the backlighting resulting in diffraction and refraction. Our next subject is a housefly. I was really surprised that I managed to get this close as normally they are extremely skittish. The second last subject I'm really pleased to share with you is of another gorgeous male garden jumping spider with stunning coloration of orange and metallic hues. This specimen was hunting on the Swiss cheese plant in our garden too and as I got too close, unsurprisingly it jumped onto my lens then ended up on my hand and fingers and I managed to grab several shots of him in different positions. Here you can see him resting momentarily on my fingernail. This next shot was taken just right before it leaped onto my lens once again. If you look closely, you can see those rather intimidating fangs, but no need to worry, they can't pierce your skin. The next two shots of him were taken while he was exploring my shirt, and then I managed to take him back to his home, the Swiss cheese plant, where I grabbed a few more portraits from multiple angles. In the very last close-up, you can see it deploying his drag line, which jumping spiders use for safety. The very last series is of another jumping spider species called Bronzehopper. This was probably one of the largest females I've ever spotted in our garden. I really liked the eye contact in the first two portraits, even though the focus could have been slightly better. The next two side portraits show tremendous amount of detail in the CT, the tiny bristle-like hairs surrounding those huge eyes, for example. This following shot, which was taken at 4x magnification as well, you can see the spinnerets, which they use to produce silk with amazing tensile properties. The second last shot is super detailed too, probably the most detail I've ever captured in a single frame of this species. The last shot consists of three frames, so I was satisfied with the depth of field, which resulted in great sharpness of both the pedipalps and the front part of its cephalothorax, including the eyes. Alright, this is it for today. As I said before, I've been thoroughly enjoying this new setup with the R7. I think it is an exceptional camera that suits my macro photography perfectly. The only small issue that I've had was ergonomic. Sometimes I wished it was slightly larger, but unfortunately this particular camera body does not support any grips. But overall I'm super happy with it and I can't wait to do more work in the field with the Laowa 25mm on the R7. I'm also gonna get the new 90mm Laowa ultra macro lens, so keep an eye out for some videos using that combination as well. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and catch you all very soon in the next one.